marketing at default. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, my name is Ted Holty. I'm Vice President of Marketing at eFolder and your host for today's event. Welcome to the eFolder Partner Chat. This webinar series brings together leading eFolder partners for business-oriented discussions. Today's topic is No More Zenith, Migrating to Win. Today we are joined by Bobby Kud, uh, Director of Application Development and Managed Services at CTSI. Uh, before I introduce Bobby, let's go through a couple housekeeping items. Um, Today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We will also make copies of the slides available to those who registered for the event. With over 80 people registered for today's session, we have put all participants in, in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it uh, to your computer or by dialing in over the phone. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout today's webinar. We have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, but you may submit them as we go along, and we will try to address your questions on the fly. Today's presentation follows a logical flow. First, we will discuss the news of Zenith's closure and some of the challenges that Zenith has created for partners like CTSI. Bobby will then discuss the specific challenges that Zenith created for his company and how his company chose to address those problems and how his company has regained their footing by successfully migrating and upgrading migrating and upgrading over 40 BDRs to date. Finally, we'll discuss the options you have as a partner um, for migration and upgrading through eFolder. Now let me introduce Bobby. Bobby Kud is Director of Managed Services at CTSI, a Lubbock, Texas-based MSP focused on improving the life and business success of clients across West Texas and Eastern New Mexico. He is a 20-year veteran of the IT industry having previously worked in leadership positions at Southwest Airlines and Sprint. Bobby is a firm believer that selfless teamwork and outstanding customer service are the key tenets of any successful endeavor, and managed services is no different. Bobby, thanks for joining us, and welcome. Thanks for having me, Ted. Okay. Um, well, let me, let, me turn, uh, let me turn the floor over to you and, and let you introduce your company and get the discussion going, and then I'll keep an eye on the Q&A log as we go along and, uh, and interject where, where appropriate. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, Computer Transition Services Incorporated, or CTSI, as I'm going to refer to us now, is we were founded in 1985, so we're in our 29th year of operation. Uh, located in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, we've got clients ac all across uh, eastern New Mexico and west Texas. Uh, we're up to 40 employees. We've got, uh, out, of, out of our managed service cl services clients, we've got about 120 managed services clients. And out of those managed services clients, we've got 68 of those that have at least one BDR. You could advance to the next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, we've been uh, keeping abreast of, the, of what's been going on with Zenith Infotech over the past uh, couple of years. And, you know, we have been rumblings in the Indian courts about uh, issues with their uh, liquidity and issues with them being able to, to remain solvent. So we've been closely, closely watching those. And uh, as time has gone on, we realize that we probably need to keep uh, another vendor in mind uh, as, we, as that situation became more and more unreliable. So we started a relationship with eFolder oh, probably about two years ago. Um, and as uh, we b began that, started issuing uh, some eFolder solutions, still also offered some Xena solutions as well. But as uh, more and more things came out in the press over the past uh, year or so, we realized uh, we need to have a strategic vision for, for getting off of Zenith and, and getting on to something else that would help uh, actually provide a long-term solution for our clients. So uh, I'm sure you've all seen the news about how uh, Zenith has faced liquidation orders by the Indian courts uh, and their operations are going to cease on October 15th. So um, with those of, uh, if, if you're like we are, where you ha had heavily invested in Zenith uh, infrastructure, you're, you're kind of left in a in a difficult spot, and that, uh, that's what we uh, tried, or that's what we did uh, get away from, and hopefully that's something that we can uh, give you a little bit of advice on how to get away from. You wouldn't mind going to the next one? Yeah. So uh, the problem that we faced, we had, well, overall we had uh, 78 BDRs out there in use. 
um, almost all of which were uh, Zenith devices. We started switching some of them in and out. We, we made a, a concerted effort in September of 2013 that we were going to only sell e-folder devices exclusively uh, because of the, the uncertainty surrounding Zenith Infotech. Once the end of 2013 came around, came around um, we realized we needed to accelerate that because there were more articles in the press about um, Zenith Infotech, Infotech's capability to stay around. And we decided at that point, not only were we only going to sell e-folder devices going forward, but we were going to retrofit all existing BDRs and swap them out. Whether they were on a new uh, or due for a new agreement or not, we were going to swap them out and do what we needed to do to completely get Zenith out of our ecosystem. If you wouldn't mind uh, hitting the next slide, please. So uh, the problem that we faced, and uh, I'm sure some of uh, you guys listening are encountering similar problems, uh, Zenith Infotech had a special arrangement with Shadow Protect in that they had a version of Shadow Protect, I believe 4.2 was the last one that they went with, where it was well behind the most current release. Um, which that had, they had their own hooks into, which was good for them, but the problem was if any patches came along, any uh, things that had been fixed in subsequent releases, we didn't get the luxury of getting those. So that was one of the problems that we saw on a recurring basis with Zenith. And another thing that we faced with Zenith quite a bit that was really difficult, and uh, if you've dealt with Zenith, I'm sure you've encountered this yourself, the only way to get support, or the only way that we saw, was to by initiating a chat session online. And so you would uh, go onto their partner portal, and you would open a ticket, and it would start a chat session. You would be, uh, you would go through their uh, level one support. Uh, you would, and what was particularly frustrating is that every time you went back to them, you would go back to level one support and would have to convince level one support that your problem was worthy of level two or level three. Um, so it was, when you combine that with the fact that chat, internet chat, uh, is inherently slow, especially when they're working on multiple problems at once, it made for a very, very frustrating support scenario. So uh, that was something else that really made us uh, look somewhere else. Another thing that we saw was that uh, anything after Windows 2003 server we had difficulty virtualizing on, on the Zenith hardware. They, um, some of the devices that we had from them had as little as uh, one gig of RAM. And if you try to take any operating system after Windows 2003 and you try to virtualize it in a, on a VM that has less than one gig of, of uh, physical RAM, it's just, uh, it's either not going to work or if it does, it's gonna be like watch, watching paint dry. It's just gonna be incredibly slow. And so that got frustrating for us as well, uh, as we had a couple of incidents where we did have clients that needed to virtualize, and we had to explain to them that we could not because the hardware couldn't support it. Um, and along with that, became, there was a growing concern on our part that what we had promised our clients that uh, we may not be able to deliver on. We promised a certain recovery time. We promised a, a, that there would be a minimum downtime uh, when we sell this. Uh, this device and this service, and uh, it was quickly becoming apparent that we would not be able to fulfill that agreement based upon what we had deployed in the field. So what did we do? Uh, if you, I can get you advanced to the next slide, please. Oh, well, and uh, kind of the, uh, the, the culmination of all of this uh, occurred in February of this year. We had a client that uh, had a Cis uh, or had a Zenith device that uh, they had a, an outage. They had their server crashed. It was a catastrophic failure, and we tried to fall back to the Zenith BDR, and we were not able to. We were able to virtualize here and there, uh, get things, get them limping along at times. But it was very inconsistent, and then once it came time to do a bare metal restore to get their server back, we. Uh, encountered problem after problem after problem, and the client ended up being down for about a week. So, um, and uh, as I was telling Ted, this was probably the worst client uh, to have this happen to, and that it was a law firm. So, uh, you know, we had concern about how litigious they were going to be, and 
uh, you know, obviously they were not very happy with the situation. The good news is we still have them as a client. So uh, what we did, oh, so uh, we just, uh, decided to standardize on the eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect. Um, we migrated data from Zenith to the eFolder Storage Cloud. We did have some Zenith G12 units out there, some of the newer units, uh, and what we've tried doing with those is uh, using the update program that eFolder is offering and update the software on those to actually back up to the eFolder cloud. Um, that's worked somewhat well, um, but as I mentioned before, when Zenith rolled out their hardware, the hardware specs were probably lower than they should have been, uh, therefore um, in, the need, in the event that we need to virtualize, it's not going to be a very pretty situation, and we're actually going to go ahead and be doing uh, upgrades of those to eFolder devices as well. So all told, we're looking at you know, all 68 uh, clients getting on to uh, eFolder devices. Um, and then also uh, 58 of those devices we replaced through the eFolder BDR upgrade program. And I think Ted's got some more information on that coming up, but that's turned out to be a very good program for us where uh, we take the old Zenith units and we, um, we take inventory of them and then we ship them back to eFolder and eFolder is able to responsibly dispose of those for us. And we get a, a nice little uh, uh, credit on those which, which, which Ted will go into in a moment. And then on, because of all that we're able to guarantee the, uh, the RTO and RPO for our clients which in the end allows us to keep our clients, keep them happy, and make a profit. So, Bobby, at this point what I'd, I'd like to do is encourage everyone on the line to, to ask your questions. I mean, if we kind of turn the clock back, I mean, what was, what was, the, what was the hardest part about making, making this migration <clears throat> for the, your clients? Uh, I think probably the hardest, t the hardest part was just making the time to do it. Um, it was, obviously, there was an investment on our part taking uh, getting the the new hardware out there, getting the old hardware back, um, and then obviously when you get in a situation like this, you've got to start the offsite backups once again. Um, so that was probably the most difficult thing we ran into. And, and tell me it, a little bit about it, how you how you priced and packaged. I mean, was it was it obvious? I mean, can you talk a little bit about how you price and package your BDR offerings today? And then sure, how seamless or visible was this whole process to your clients? Sure. Uh, the way we uh, package and price it, we, uh, we don't charge a monthly fee for w the actual off-site usage. We use the pricing calculator or a variation of that you guys provide on your partner portal to estimate what usage is going to be over the next 36 months. And from that, we come up with a fixed fee. Uh, just kind of, a, once again, uh, it becomes easier to budget for everyone involved if there's a fixed fee and uh, clients like seeing that. So uh, based upon projected usage, we, we come up with a fixed fee and, uh, and you know, extrapolate. Make, we, we'd only do 36-month contracts on these. Um, I'm sorry, your other question was how seamless well, so, was so, that? So, 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 so a fixed fee, so a fixed monthly fee, and then Correct. I, I guess, you know, did you charge, I mean, Stephen just asked a question, did you charge the client anything during the migration? Or I mean, how does kind of the upfront component work and when you would then switch to these folks from a Zenith deployment to an eFolder deployment and you put in a new BDR appliance, it, was there any cash charged to the clients or did they just keep rolling along with the 36-month fee? How did that work? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what we did, we, we started off when uh, things weren't quite as urgent as their three-month uh, agreement was expiring, we would then sign them up for a new agreement with a new eFolder device and then charge a new amount at that time. Uh, as time went on and we realized, hey, uh, Zenith's not going to be around much longer, we realized, uh, you know what, it, regardless of whether they're needing to have a, a new agreement or not, it is time for us to swap these things out. And we did not charge. Uh, for the ones that we've been doing that during the first half of this year, we did not charge our clients at all for that. We went ahead and swapped those out, uh, just mitigating our risk. Okay, great. And Steve has a question. Um, what kind of margins, profit margins, are you trying to achieve on a, on a monthly basis um, for your BDR product line? Well, it, it varies when you're doing a pricing model like what we're doing. Um, it, you know, because you're doing it based upon projected usage, 
you're going to start off with very, very large margins, and then those margins are going to shrink as time goes on, as more and more uh, disk space is used off-site. But we're shooting, we're shooting around the 50% the range for the lifetime of the contract. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. So let's kind of just talk about, you know, kind of where you've been and where you're going and over the next uh, couple months. So, yeah. So uh, at this point right now, we've got all of our, uh, the old Zenith except for the G12s uh, converted over to eFolder devices. Uh, and then what we're going to be doing over the coming months and going to try to get done by the end of uh, 2014 is take those G12 units that we had uh, upgraded to eFolder software and actually replace those with eFolder hardware. And that's, uh, let's see, we're in mid-September, so I, I think that's probably a, a, a realistic goal, but that's, uh, that's what we're going to try to do by the end of 2014. Okay. Well, great. And so a question just came in from Gloria, kind of an interesting question, and just would like your kind of take on it. Um, she says, uh, we haven't sold the hardware to anyone, and the cost to replace the hardware is huge. Can you comment on that or, or, or help her think about the economics or what, what they should be doing in their business? Sure. So, I, I, and make sure I understand it that the so there's concern about the the uh, capital expenditure being huge when uh, it being a little bit difficult to absorb. Uh, the way I see it, uh, the alternative, which is losing the client altogether because you don't have the supported device, is even more costly. Um, and then also we're hoping because of these, uh, because we sign them up to long term contracts, we will you know make that up in the long term. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, I think, I mean, the good news here is that you kind of were able to tackle the problem as it started to evolve, and so it didn't hit you all at once, right? And then you've, you've been, um, I mean, I think the other thing you've smartly done, Bobby, over time is that you've used the eFolder pricing calculator to target kind of above average recurring margins, and so you're cash flowing a lot of, you're cash flowing a lot of business on a monthly basis, and so you can kind of subsidize uh, the more urgent migrations for certain clients, I think, right? That's kind of financially right, right. How, how things turn out. And I think your part, your your points are dead on. Um, you know that the cost of losing a client or cost of having a client be jeopardized is going to far exceed the kind of the capex you may need to make in new new hardware. Um, yeah, and it, it's important to distinguish that we only bring on BDR clients if they are also uh, subscribed to our managed services program. So there, there, there are other revenues coming in along with this. So there, the, the risk of losing a client uh, is there, there's a lot tied to that, not to mention hardware pull through. So yeah, the, the outlay for a replacement BDR unit is minuscule compared to what you would lose if you lost the client. Okay, and then let's see here. Um, I'm just looking here at the Q&A log. Uh, can you talk? Um, just talk technically about what you would actually do in some of these locations. So the question was specifically is technically what was the migration path to go from Zenith to eFolder BDR? Please assume that the e Zenith hardware we were using is currently unsuitable. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? Like technically? Sure. Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty seamless. The reason being is because we selected uh, eFolder for Shadow Protect. Uh, Zenith uses Shadow Protect software as well. As I mentioned, they didn't use the most recent version of Shadow Protect, but the concept is the same in that you install a, a, an agent on each device that you want uh, backed up. You uh, set up the BDR. It reaches out you, based on a schedule, creates those backups, creates the base, creates the, uh, the incrementals. Uh, so the concept is completely the same. It's just that you're dealing with a different, uh, you know, a different cloud that you're shipping things off to. That's right. Hopefully that, did that did that answer. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I mean, and so in in the vast majority of these cases, you forklift did a forklift upgrade, you sourced a new BDR appliance from eFolder, and then you used the eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect because that was the the software flavor you and your techs were most comfortable with using, and then right. from from then on out, all of the data then gets protected in the eFolder cloud. Um, right, and, and and that's the key difference is that you know we had data in the Zenith cloud. 
Uh, and then once we switch over to the eFilter cloud, you've got to reseed all of that data. And that's that's probably the most complicated part of the process. Right. Even so that's it's, not yeah, it's, I mean, it's labor intensive, but I mean, from a, from a you know, you got to roll trucks out there and you got to get out to the customer site and whatnot. But, you know, for the partners that are on the line who may or may not be doing business with eFolder yet, um, you know, that, that pre-seed part of the process is free. You just ship in the, the, the initial full on disk to us. We, we seed that into the data center and then ship you the disks back. So, um, you know, I think what, what a comment I would make, you know, kind of to, to Gloria's point earlier is that I'm, I guess we shouldn't kind of be too coy about this. I mean, I think one of the programs we have, we, we supplied to CTSI and is available to all eFolder partners is our BDR upgrade program. And just so it's clear, you know, we provide a thousand dollars off a new eFolder BDR hardware appliance um, when you officially decommission that Zenith unit and ship it back into us. We give you the credit at time zero, if you will. So when you make the, when you make the purchase of that new BDR appliance, we give you the savings immediately, and then you just have a time window within which you need to ship in the old appliance for recycling. So, um, you know, that's this forty thousand dollars at least savings that CTSI was able to realize. And Gloria, to your question about just the capital investment, I mean that really means you can roughly have for entry level type BDR appliances. You can you can you can roughly half the uh, in the door cost or out the door cost rather um, of that appliance through this program. So let me just look here at the Q and A log one more time. Um, uh, yeah, so so Nick, I just explained how the BDR upgrade program works. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm just looking at Steve's question here. Um, I guess John asked the question, and I think this may, we may have already answered this, but John asked, how difficult was the software conversion of the BDR G12s? Actually, uh, that, that's a very good question because that was more difficult. The software conversion, uh, one of the things that we saw is that um, Zenith tentacles uh, ran pretty deeply into the you know, we found, uh, and that actually we're probably still finding that to this day different things that they had hooked in. Um, if you've used, used them, you're familiar. They use the Viper antivirus. They've got other special uh, services that they've got running on those machines. Uh, at the time, we weren't exactly sure what those were, but yeah, those are Xenus services that are out there uh, running that have, have, need to be removed. So uh, there is a little, little bit of extra work and probably some trial and error uh, to be uh, involved there, but uh, those are also some learnings that we'd be glad to share as well. Okay, well, well, and so Steve asked, uh, you know, asked about the 40k savings. He says 40k saving versus what you would have paid Zenith, or so. So Steve, really, the initial savings that CTSI was able to realize is as they did those replace those 40 units with new eFolder BDR hardware appliances, we gave them a thousand dollar credit on each one of those, and that program is available to all eFolder partners who decommission a legacy unit and trade it and, and recycle it. Um, so um, Eric wants to know, does anyone know if Shadow Protect on the Zenith BDRs will cease functioning on October 15th as they won't be able to communicate back to the Zenith license server? Um, I don't actually know the answer to that. Uh, Bobby, do you happen to know? I do not know. Uh, I. I Tell you the truth, I wasn't aware that they uh, connected back to a license server. Yeah, it's it. You know, we can get this. We we should, as a follow up, find the answer to this. But my, my assumption is they they it will continue to function. I mean, what you're going to definitely lose is the is the cloud backup of those if you don't have an alternative in place. But I, and I think that's that's kind of a good segue here. I mean, if we just look at what you know your decision choices are. Um, you know, you could just do nothing, but that's not, you know, that's not really a good option right now at this point in the game. But, but really, you've got two different options. You can make the decision CTSI made, which was do a, you know, you know, damn the torpedoes, if you will, and and do that forklift upgrade on on all of the existing units. And the biggest savings program you have at your disposal is the folder BDR upgrade program. And I'll I'll get into the details on that a little bit 
a little bit more, but it basically involves getting a new BDR appliance out there, source from e-folder, and start and start running our BDR for Shadow Protect service um, on that installation. The the other option you do have, and I and I and this kind of ties into the other question of whether the the, the Shadow Protect software will continue to function. I mean, I think it we think it will. Um, it's just that you don't in those situ in those la locations you don't you don't have any successful cloud back you don't have any cloud backup going anymore and and so the eFolder BDR rescue program is a slightly different program and what what it allows us to do is you put the eFolder so backup agent on that uh, on that installation and you can back it up to our cloud environment for a, a really low price as an interim solution you're basically buying yourself time giving yourself maybe some cash flow breathing room on certain clients but the reality is you can you can kind of take either of these programs um, as a way to you know kind of either buy time and or you know bite the bullet and 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 do that forklift upgrade so the BDR uh, rescue program it's really drop dead uh, affordable I mean it's 15 cents a gig and you just point the the backups to the eFolder cloud as an interim solution and then as we discussed a couple minutes ago the eFolder BDR upgrade program gives you a thousand dollar credit when you book that new appliance with eFolder um, and then you have free inbound shipping of the legacy appliance and then we recycle the unit on your behalf. Um, so that's kind of uh, you know the, some of the key things. Um, let's see here. Um, so I'm just, Bobby, I'm just looking at the questions here. Um, sure. So, so Richard just wants to know about eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect, a general product question. And the question is, is can the backups be replicated to our cloud offering? And the answer is yes. There is a feature in eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect that allows you to do either cross-site replication from two different client locations to it, each other, if you have BDR appliances at each. Or alternatively, you can put a large BDR appliance in your own co-location and and then replicate the data from the client locations back to your larger centralized kind of the, the hub and a hub and spoke type uh, deployment um, that is a, an alternative deployment scenario that we do support um, and, and we have partners that will do kind of a mix of things so the way it works is it's forty dollars per location um, and if you replicate to yourself all you're paying is that forty dollars per um, forty dollars per location um, in addition to the, sh the shadow protect software licenses which are twenty dollars per uh, to per month per server um, however most partners will back up straight to the eFolder cloud environment and and do what what Bobby talked about where you you try to forecast what your your data growth and your utilization is going to be over a 36 month period we give partners a uh, you know, pricing calculator to kind of forecast that so you have a good idea of what your wholesale costs are going to be. And then, you know, my recommendation to partners is to, to take that wholesale price and triple it, at least triple it. I mean, triple it or at least double it, rather. Um, and that's going to give you a really good, nice uh, gross margin over time. Bobby, any other thoughts or comments on that? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. That's, that's essentially what we try to do. We want a, a double. We want to double our wholesale costs over the 36 months of uh, of the lifetime of that BDR. Okay, and then let's see here. Drew has a question. Not sure if you would mind sharing, but we're curious how they're monitoring Shadow Protect backups on the new devices when Zenith used to have a single portal to check backup status. So I guess just to kind of talk about how you're using the eFolder portal to monitor. The different client locations. Uh, that yeah, that is a bit different. I think what we've done on that to because you do not have that single uh, pane of glass like we've got uh, like we had with Zenith, uh, and we would get notifications from them. But you've also got within Shadow Protect, there's a, a lot of capability to set up email notifications, and we've set up uh, you know if a backup doesn't take place, if an offsite doesn't take place. We set up email notifications, and those email notifications come into us. Uh, they can come into our RMM tool. Um, so it's you, we, you don't have the same thing where you've got their help desk sitting there watching things and calling you. But in my opinion, it's it's just as just as good because you've got control over it. 
Yeah, and you get and, and on the eFolder portal, you get a lot of uh, monitoring and backup status information from the portal. We also support um, ConnectWise and AutoTask integration for ticketing, so you can um, you know integrate a lot of the you know re alerts into you know your ticketing framework and your PSA uh, function. So um, you know I think we we hear a lot of really good things from partners about you know especially the ConnectWise integration. So um, I think that. Uh, a lot of there's a lot of good news there. Um, so so Nick weighed in with a, with a comment. Um, he says for that last question, I checked with our Zenith account manager, and she said that the licenses will continue to function, but you will not be able to add any additional servers. So that that makes sense. I, I think it connects with a uh, license manager at when you first install it, and so I think that centralized license server will not be around from now on. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, kind of a last last call for questions. Okay. Uh, not seeing any, Bobby. Any final thoughts on uh, helping partners navigate this uh, this part of being an MSP? <laughs> um, no, I, uh, not that I can think of. I just. Um you know, I, I wish everybody the, the best of luck. This has put many MSPs in, in a bind, uh, and uh, hopefully we can make the most of this and, and kind of all, all band together and come through. Well, thank you very much, Bobby, for sharing your insights and your experience, and I just would like to remind everybody who joined us today, you know, eFolder has these two different programs which allow you to, to either, you know, the BDR rescue program, it's kind of a safety net type scenario where you can just send the data safely to um, off-site you know, to the eFolder cloud, and then when you're ready to do that forklift upgrade, um, the eFolder BDR upgrade program is a great way to save a thousand bucks on a on a new eFolder BDR appliance, and uh, uh, really helps take the sting out of that capital investment that may need to be made if the client's not actually on the hook for the upgrade. Um, and I think between the two programs, you've kind of got uh, uh, hopefully some answers and some potential solutions on navigating uh, the situation and want to thank everybody for joining us today and please talk to your eFolder account manager if you're anxious to get started with either of those programs. Bobby, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ted. Okay, guys. Take care now. Okay, bye.